2020 has been a bit of a crazy year. So instead of doing a video about the top inks of 2020, I thought I'd do the top crazy inks of 2020. And these are inks that are crazy for various reasons. For instance, this ink has metal filings in it. And yes, I said metal filings. Most of these inks are from Asia since I do live here and it's easier for me to get a hold of them. And many of them are Sailor and Tono and Limbs inks because Sailor and Tono and Limbs have just been fire hosing the inks out into the market. So if you're the kind of person that's not curious as to why an ink would have metal filings in it, I would suggest you use Waterman Serenity Blue, Pilot Blue Black, or Mont Blanc Royal Blue. And for the rest of you, hang on. Hell Bob is one of the Comet inks from the Hase Crystal line of inks. The box has a picture of the solar system with a notation of the Kuiper Belt and the Oort Cloud where long period comets originate from and also Hell Bob. Here's the metal filings on the bottom. I get the distinct feeling from all the detail about astronomy on the box that the guys that run Tono and Limbs have different interests and they express them through their ink offerings. I learned that the Kuiper Belt is 48 to 50 AUs away, astronomical units. This is a muddy brown yellow color in which the metal filings give it a very hard shimmer. The chromatography is interesting in that it has the shimmer line and then also some pink and green. This is a glass pen only ink and I'm including them because glass pens have really become an important part of the fountain pen world over here in Japan. Since I rarely use the Pilot 6.0, yep, I stuck the ink in there. But life happens and I didn't get to this video for seven weeks so that ink was in the pen for seven weeks. So we'll figure out what happened to it at the end of the video. This is what the parallel looked like after seven weeks of having this ink in it. We'll go clean it out later. This is the splotch test and you can see it kind of has a hard shine from its metal filings. But the interesting thing is it kind of pools up. It's not like one solid gold coin. Here in the 6.0 writing you can see that it has that hard shine that kind of separates out. It's a glass pen only ink and don't use it in your fountain pens. You can just watch it here or use it in a fountain pen. You don't mind it destroying, but it didn't destroy my 6.0. This next ink comes in a bag. It's from Bungu Khan Takizawa or the pen box and it's their Sessai line of ink. This one is called Kayen Gatadoki, which means flame type earthenware. I got it at the big ink show we have here in Tokyo and I'll link to that in the upper right hand corner. It's a beautiful chocolatey brown with kind of a velvety green sheen there. But what makes it stand out is that when you add water to the ink after it's dried or semi-dried, you get all kinds of beautiful colors, some pink and some green, a little bit of gray. I got this ink because of its interesting chromatography, but this is kind of like a chromatography on the go. I'll show the actual chromatography for this later. Next up is Kala's tribute to Neon called Dude. This is an ink called Dude, and it's neon blue. This line of tribute to neon inks has interesting names like Foxy for their neon pink and Groovy for their violet. I particularly like the name Boogie. It makes me want to bust out my platform shoes and my bell bottoms. All of the colors in this line of ink are eye popping and almost glow in the dark crazy. I first saw this ink at Itoya's ink show back in January. I'll link to it in the upper right hand corner. But it had really gained popularity this summer. As an aside, four months ago on my Instagram, I did this Karapo review where I put Dude inside of this pen. You put this long spongy thing that's inside the pen into ink until it sucks up the ink and then stick it back in the pen. And now you have a felt tip pen you can use with your fountain pen ink. I had done this four months ago and it hadn't dried out at all. It works great. Despite having a kind of boring chromatography, Dude is a beautiful color. 
Since all the inks in Kala's line of tribute to neon inks are pigmented, they're all waterproof. And as another side note, when you clean off a glass pan with pigment ink, sometimes you get this leftover, but we'll clean it up and I'll show you how later. The next set of inks is Scribo, and they made the list because they stack. Here I have Verde Bosco, which is a green, Blue Cosmico, which is a blue, and Grigio Scribo, which is a kind of gray. If you're interested, I did a complete review on these inks and I'll link it in the upper right hand corner. They have an interesting jam jar cap, a large opening tied around with gray string. The bottles are very heavy glass. And the bottom is hollow to allow the stacking. And they're packaged in a beautiful box and they're so heavyweight that each one weighs over a pound. So bottle inside of the box is half a kilo. Two's Glass Studio has a line of ink called Poison, and this color is Narcissus. It's a glass pen only ink. Two's Glass Studio makes beautiful glass pens. And yes, I put it in a Pilot Parallel 6.0 for seven weeks, and it worked out just fine. But stick to glass pens, or perhaps dip pens for this ink. It's a yellow ink with yellow shimmer. This ink made the crazy list because of its eye-popping color, and despite its boring chromatography, it has a really interesting greasy-looking shimmer. I use this happy yellow color on cloudy days. Lennon Toolbar's Gushing Spring made this list because it pretty much well is a commemorative ink of this year. This ink is from Taiwan, and the light blue color is the color of surgical masks used at hospitals. It's a fundraiser, and the profits will go to the Taiwan Young Pharmacists Group. When COVID was exploding last spring, the Taiwan Young Pharmacists Group helped distribute masks. The name of the ink comes from a Qing Dynasty saying, one should return someone's kindness that may be as little as a drop of water with utmost gratitude as substantial as an overflowing spring. It's a pretty light blue color, has a straightforward chromatography, and looks especially nice with a flex pen. I got the background information on this ink from the Instagram account at Saichu. And he got his information from Lennon Toolbar. I'm keeping this ink because it reminds me of all the COVID problems of 2020. I'm going to take a short mid-roll ad break. And when we get back, it's an ink from Modizen. The next ink, Modizen Athena Nihonbashi Ginkan, represents the inks that became very popular this year that I call chromo shaders or multi shaders. This one happens to be my current favorite since it's in this vase-like bottle. Madizen is a book and stationery store, and Athena is their line of ink. It typically comes in this vase bottle. This particular ink is limited to their Nihonbashi store, hence the name. Here you can see it looks very much like Sailor Haha. -Ha. This is one of the new Pilot Parallels. This is a 4.5. I like this size much better than the Pilot 6.0. These chromo shaders shade, but they shade in a different color. Here, as you can see while I'm writing, the ink looks like a light gray. But I'll speed up the next clip so you can see as it dries, the places where it shades turns a different color, in this case pink. Where it shades at the ends of these lines, it's turned pink, and other places it's turned a kind of violet, even though this is a gray ink. This is not as extreme as, say, Sailor Mano Haha, but it's a beautiful chromo shading ink nonetheless. Tono and Limbs, the Gleaners, is from their Respect line. It is a painting by Jean Francois Millet in 1857, an oil on canvas. And this ink uses the colors that are in 
that painting inside the ink. It's a dye ink, but then it also has pigments in it. And the pigments are of varying sizes. Some of it's pretty small and some of it's very large to give it a very matte finish when you use it. Of course, it's a glass pen only ink. And of course, I put it in a fountain pen, a platinum preppy. Here you can see the thicker pieces of the pigment gathered on the bottom of the bottle. I'm dripping this ink down some water and if you look closely you'll see little tiny pieces go shooting down. These are the pigment pieces that weigh a little heavier and aren't held back by the water. It's the first time I've seen this in ink as I drip it down water. Here's the platinum preppy that I put this ink into seven weeks ago. If you look at the feet, it looks pretty strange, so we'll see if it even writes. I'm not worried about Platinum's converter because they're really great. You can take them apart and I know I'll be able to clean it out. But the Preppy's feet is stuck in there and you can't take it out and that's the really annoying part. That's why I don't, oh look it wrote just fine. But as I was saying, I don't like Platinum Preppy's because you can't clean out the feet. With the preppy, it's a matte olive color. But with the splotch test, it comes out with this beautiful, chalky looking pink, gray green color. I've never seen an ink anything like this. This ink might be interesting for an artist if they're looking for like a chalky finish. Here you can see with the Pilot Parallel and then the Platinum Preppy and different kinds of glass pens that you get colors that range from olive to pink to gray and its multicolor look is reflected in its chromatography. I'd like to show you a kit called Paper Chromatography. It's sold by a company called No Detail Is Small and Tag Stationery sells it on their website. You get paperboard pieces to make two frames and instructions on how to do this chromatography. You get two sheets of chromatography paper with six butterfly cutouts on each get several pages where you can mount these butterflies and put your information on it. Here are the butterflies. You pop them out of the paper and you need something like a yakitori or meat skewer stick to hang them in the water. I didn't have any, but I remembered my bento lunch had these chopsticks and inside the package is a little toothpick. The chopsticks are too large to put through the hole. Here I'm using the gleaners and you put the ink on the bottom part of the wings and then I used a toothpick and then tried to hang it in this beaker. I was having a little bit of a problem. It would have been better if I had used yakitori sticks or something. I don't know why they didn't include it in the package. And I'm adding a little bit more water to make sure it kind of comes up a little bit higher and can touch the paper. I'm not going to put you through the whole process but I probably shouldn't have used gleaner for filming this as it has too many particulates in it. And like I said, I should have used a little bit longer stick, like a yakitori stick or something. And eventually the toothpick gave way and the whole thing fell in the water later. Here I am making the frame that they give you the material to do. I dried the butterflies on chopsticks so I wouldn't get ink on my countertop. This is the Sessai, the brown ink that has other colors that comes out of it. And this one here is the Athena Ginkan. And I'm using double-sided tape to mount the butterfly I did with the Sessai Kayangata Doki, the brown ink that had the different colors that came out of it. They had these creepy stickers that looked like pins that you could mount the butterflies on, but they should have just included yakitori sticks. Instead, I'm going to use uh, double-sided tape also. And this is the butterfly that has the gleamer, the one that fell in the water, and that's why the right side of the wing doesn't have any ink in it. And then you fill in the date that you did the chromatography, the place, the name of the ink, and then what star rating you gave it, and then any kind of notes that you may have about it. It's a pretty fun way to do chromatography. J. Urban's 350th Anniversary inks made this list just for their sheer size. They come in 500 milliliter bottles. Their colors offered are their five oldest colors they've had for sale. 
Here I have their purple, which is their Ankh Violet Ponce, and their blue, which is the Ankh Blue Musotis. I first saw these bottles at Tokyo Hands at their fountain pen section. They were using them for decoration. I asked the sales lady if I could purchase them and she looked at me like I was crazy. So I had to order them online. The bottles are old timey looking and have a very thick heavy wax cap. I opened the violet bottle of ink and it was just really hard. I had to kind of saw off the wax. Here you can see the bottle in comparison to the size of my hand. It's like a full up drink or something. The violet is a nice pretty purple with a straight up normal chromatography. I don't think I'm ever going to make my way through all this ink. I'm leaving the blue color sealed up. So if these inks made it because they were large bottles, I guess we have to do small bottles too. And that would be Tag Stationery's mini ink bottle sets. You can see a pen next to them for their size. This was their fall set. These are muted autumn colors and the swatches on top of the bottle is the actual color of the ink. This is their winter set. Colors are Before Dawn, Winter North Star, Light Snow, Cold Rose, and Winter Trees. These are 5 milliliter bottles of ink made with Yuzen dye, and they're not samples of larger bottles of ink. We'll try out the Cold Rose. It's a pretty dark pink ink, and these little bottles are just perfect for playing with glass pens or dip pens. This is Kawasaki Bunku Ten's ink called Amabie. I selected this one because it represents 2020 and all of our COVID problems. Amabie is a Japanese yokai or monster. It's a three-tailed merperson that rose out of the ocean and predicted six years of a great harvest and six years of a pandemic. You can't really tell if it's a he or she, but he said that if you show my picture to people, you will protect those people from the pandemic. Amabia faded away into history and was no longer popular until COVID came along and some manga artists popularized it. But now Amabia is everywhere. It's on a fountain pen, it's on stickers everywhere, cookies and trinkets. It's even one of the mascots for the Ministry of Health. It's a thin, light green, dry ink that looks best in a flex. So take a good close look at Amabia so you can be protected from the pandemic. He's good friends with the Easter Bunny. This is Yaching style jewelry ink in the color turquoise and you open the box as if you're opening a box for a gemstone. This ink has nano-sized particles of natural turquoise and of course being inky rocks this needs to be one of my inks. Lai Yaqing is a jewelry designer and she runs Yaqing Style which is a line of glass pens that use converters. It's a blue ink, but here you can see the turquoise that has settled on the bottom of the bottle on the right side. These bottles are hand polished after they get them back from the factory. This makes the glass super clear and has sharp edges. The bottle can also tilt on its side so that you can get the ink out easier. The bottom has a round cutout so you can stack it on top of another bottle and actually spin it. And again you can see the turquoise on the bottom and it's real turquoise. The chromatography is a straight up baby blue. Here it is compared to Gushing Spring and compared to Dude. The coolest thing is the way it feels when you write with it. It's basically a pigment ink since it is particles of turquoise. 
And there are a lot of pigment inks now that do feel pretty smooth like Kakimori pigment inks. But this ink feels smooth and somewhat cushiony. It's hard to explain. I've never experienced an ink like this. It's also a prettier color when you make it a little bit darker. And also since it's a pigment ink, it's waterproof. But the most unusual thing is when you drip it in water, you can see these little round balls of ink that kind of float on top of the water before it dissolves. I drop a lot of ink in water and I've never seen this in any other ink. I'm thinking it might just be those super nano sized particles that somehow increase the surface tension of the drops. This is my favorite ink this year. So while we're watching this, I'll announce the winner to my stationary giveaway. The Galloway Gal. Please contact me on my Instagram messages or on the email on my about page. Congratulations. Kawasaki Bunguten makes this list for the container that the inks come in. These four inks come in a sake masu cup, which is made out of cedar wood. This is an actual functioning sake cup or rice wine cup. On New Year's Day, our family typically climbs up to the top of Mount Takao and near the shrine there, they sell warm sake in these cups and they put salt on the corners to kind of like purify it. Each bottle of ink matches a side of the sake cup. This one is orchid. This one is persimmon. And this one is willow green. This one is pink sakura. We'll try out the pink sakura and it looks the best in a flex nib when you can lay down a lot of ink. I think I'm going to use this cup this New Year's. This is the glass pan that had dude on it which stained it a little bit. Pigment inks need mechanical action to get rid of the, all the stains. So I just use a variety of these brushes. And the platinum converter that had the glass pen only ink called the Gleaner in it for seven weeks came out fine. But I can't say the same for the platinum preppy. You can pull the nib out, but you just can't get that feed out and so it just gets clogged up. I couldn't kill my Pilot 6.0s because you can completely take them apart even though both of them had glass pen only inks in them for seven weeks, one with metal filings. Well, I made it through this crazy year with the help of my crazy inks. I hope you enjoyed this, and if you did, please give me a like and a subscribe. And next week is the top pens of 2020.